Hello and welcome to Upside Down. Today we are finishing our Unreal Engine 4 tutorial for foliage. In part 1, which can be found down in the description, we created a texture for grass. In this part we are going to create the models, the LODs, and after that going to import everything inside the Unreal and I'll show you how to add it into a foliage brush so that you can paint it on your terrains. Now let's roll the intro. First, we are going to start by importing our texture and I'm just going to create quickly one plane. So I'll make it like this and I'll make it one meter by one meter and we will remove all the segments for now. We're going to put the texture that we created in our last part. I'm going to use the one for Substance Painter and if you missed that video, I'm going to put a link down on the comments. Go and check it out to see how we got to this point. Now we are just opening the material editor by clicking M and I'm going to drag a PBR material. I'm going to just drag and drop the textures that we created and everything that I exported. I packed everything for Unreal, so for creating the assets we don't really need to make the full setup inside 3ds Max. I'm just going to get our diffuse and as well our alpha. And once we have the texture imported I'm just going to connect it to our base color and assign this to our plane. You can see that because we only have some color, it 3ds Max is going to be displayed a little bit weird and it's not really easy to understand where exactly are our leaves for the grass. So we need to plug the alpha as well. One thing that you can notice is that here we don't have from the alpha output, but the way that we can connect it is we can grab this and put it into our opacity mask. It will still not display it, but then if we go here to our opacity settings, you can see that here we have the option to say from where exactly the material should read the information. So we are putting it on alpha and now everything will be displayed correctly. What I'm going to do now is close the material editor menu, right click and convert this plane into editable poly and I'm going to create few divisions and after that break those into individual assets and then we can create our low polys. So I'm going to use connect and now I will detach the lower part and then I'm going to connect one more time. If I slide the connect that I created you can see that I'm going to stretch the texture. So in order not to do this we need to come down and say preserve UVs. Then I'm going to scroll it easily like that and we are going to detach that element as well. Great, I'm going to start first by making everything done for our big element. So I'm going to put the pivot all the way to the bottom and I will move those still on the side. I'll make a few subdivisions so that we can bend our leaves. So I'm going to start first by creating a few connects. I'll make like this tree and we need to have preserve UV so that we don't stretch anything. I'll put the first one over here, then one more, let's say like this, one more over here. I'll actually add one more here and then I'll add few in the other direction. Let's make it five of them. And now we can start manipulating a little bit some of them so that we get everything bended. So I'm going to move this one a little bit forward and this one as well. Great. And I'm going to start changing the other ones as well a little bit. So we get some variation on the other axis also. Other randomization just so that we make everything a little bit more randomized. Let's make a second version of this one. So I'm going to use the same type of geometry, but instead I'm just going to rotate other planes so we get kind of like a different variation this one here became too stretched so we are going to fix it so now what we are going to do is uh, copy this couple of times and after that create something I will also scale it up and down so now we have uh, this one over here. It uh, looks a little bit weird inside 3ds Max, but in Unreal it's going to look a lot better. And this is going to be one of our assets. I'm just going to move it on the side and make the same thing for some of the other assets. So first, as a start, I'm moving the pivot to the bottom and then I'm moving the asset to the center over here. I want to remove some of this bottom part. So we are going to just get it like that and once again I'll move the pivot to the center, move it on zero and make a few subdivisions. I'll make this time just two subdivisions and like this let's make three 
And again, let's make a second version, which is going to be more bended backwards. Great. Uh, I'm going to use just three, just three of those this time. This is our second asset. And then we have our last one. So now we have three assets already done. Let's start by making first their LODs. I'm going to start with the big one. Before doing the big asset, I noticed that more than 60% of you are still not subscribed. So subscribe to my channel and this way you won't miss the new videos that I'm posting. Also, if you would like to be featured in some of the videos and show your portfolio or artwork, follow Upside Downs Reddit and make a post there. So what we are doing, I'm just grabbing this one and I'm going to attach everything to it. So this is going to be our asset. I'm going to just clone it. So this is our main asset and this is going to be our LOD1. And on LOD1, what we want to do is we are just going to remove some of the geometry. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to select a few of the edges. And this way, after that, I can delete them. I'm going to remove mostly the ones on the bottom. So we kind of keep the same shape, but at the moment, if I put the statistics on, you can see that this one here, we have 300 triangles, and then this one, we have 228 triangles. I'm going to make one more version, which is going to be our LOD2. So for LOD2, I'm going to remove even more from our geometry. So just go around and select some of those elements that don't really add up to the shape of your asset. So like this, and you can see that the difference between our LOD0 and LOD2 is half of the geometry, which is already going to make a pretty good difference once everything goes a little bit in distance and further away from the character. But there is one thing that makes grass more expensive than geometry, and this is the overdraw. Overdraw is happening everywhere where you can see here we have alpha and uh, we have also alpha on the back and then you can imagine that we have other layers of grass. So everywhere where alphas are going on top of each other, we are getting overdraw. And overdraw is something which is uh, quite expensive, especially if you're developing a game for devices with a mobile GPU. So there are two ways that we can reduce the overdraw. First one I'm going to create is going to be on our LOD4. So here what I'm going to do is further reduce the triangles. So I'm going to go and remove even more from our edges. But another thing what I can do is go and select now some of our vertices. And when we have the preserve UVs selected, go on edge and then I can move this to go down and that direction as well. So now you can see that we removed some of this overdraw area. I'm going to do the same and move this here. Move it as close as possible to the grass. So we are doing the same on this side. Here, for example, you can see that this leaf is at the very edge. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move it a little bit up and then I'm just going to completely delete that edge. So this can go here closer. Perfect, so now I'm done. Uh, you can see that I managed to lower on half our geometry and as well we lowered the amount of overdraw that we are getting. This is something that you can of course do for your previous versions as well and optimize your overdraw over there. It's something that for example for such huge amount of grass it's not always going to be perfect and it's not always going to be necessary to do it because we are going to add more geometry but for smaller grass assets it's going to be perfect or also it depends a little bit how your textures is going to look like. And as well, if you're doing something for mobile and you're not planning to have a lot, a lot of grass assets. So now I'm going to move this asset from here and I'm going to unhide our other assets. So we are taking this one and hide and select it. What I'm going to do is take one of the planes and then we can get our cut tool and I will go around our alpha. You don't need to do it completely perfect because uh, remember that this is uh, an asset which is going to be seen very far in the distance, so we don't need uh, every detail. We just need the overall shape of our grass. And here it doesn't matter that I'm not following the shape because first is going to be very far, second my texture has green background all over it, so you won't uh, notice any kind of a cutout over here. And we can now delete everything which has alpha. And then we need to connect some of those elements because at the moment we have endgones. So what we're gonna do is just go around and connect some of them. I'm going to still keep this curvature. So we are not going to do it super optimized. 
but now what we can do is just select two vertices and go and connect them so now what we are doing is uh, this one here you can see that i rotated it i'm going to do the same over here so i'm just rotating it and after that i'm just pasting the same value and after that scaling it a little bit and there you have it we have our asset which is with alpha and then we have the one with cutout as I mentioned, you can check the difference in between the triangles. So we have 48 triangles where we are using alpha and then we have 116 triangles. But for this one, we are going to remove the alpha channel and as well, we are going to remove normal maps and everything else. So we're going to have a higher triangle count, but it's going to have a lot smaller impact on our GPU. Now let's export these assets and show you how we are going to set up everything inside Unreal. So I imported our mesh and as well the textures that we created. I also created a very simple material for our grass. Leave a comment down below if you would like me to make more in-depth tutorial about creating materials for our grass and as well go in-depth about some functionality, how we can add wind to the grass and so on and so on. So now let's go set up our LODs, add our material and see how everything looks like. So I'm just opening our grass and the first thing that I'm going to do is just drag and drop our material. You can see how it looks like. And now second thing that we are going to do is add our LODs. You can see that at the moment we are on LOD 0, but we can click import LOD level 1. And this is going to be our second level of details for this model. So now to check our LODs, we can come here from the drop down and you can see that at the moment it's on auto LOD, which is based on the amount of screen space that the asset is taking. And if we go to LOD 0, you can see this is our asset for LOD 0 and then this is our asset for LOD 1. You can see that there is a little bit of a change, but as I said, this is something that we are turning on once we are going far in distance, so it's not going to be noticeable. And now we can add our LOD2 and as well our LOD3. Now that we have everything set up, I'm just going to save this asset and I'm going to show you how we can add this to our full edge brush and after that start painting and placing it around our scene. So what we need to do is first go from the modes into full edge. Then here you can see that we have drop full edge here. I'm just going to drop our mesh file over here. And now when I go in the scene, you can see that we have this sphere which appears when we go once we go on top of a surface. So by clicking, you can see that Unreal will automatically place grass over there. You can control it the same way that you control everything inside Photoshop, just by the brackets, we can control the size of it. And as well, we have some other settings in terms of how much density we want and so on and so on. And once we have everything placed, it will just recompile the shader and we have our grass done. All the settings for the LODs are being taken from the file that we just set it up. So when we have everything optimized and set it up the way that we want in our file, it's going to automatically apply to all the grass that we have in the scene. Thank you for joining me in today's tutorial. Subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss the new videos. As well, go on Upside Downs Reddit if you would like me to make a review of your artwork. See you next time.